Hi, my name is Yaroslav. Thanks for watching. If you found this particular screencast on the internet and you're not aware of my blog, uh, be sure to visit sharematch.com and click on screencasts here uh, to see other videos which are, which are potentially related to what you're working on. Also, if you're working on branding um, and found this particular screencast useful, be sure to check out my uh, new book titled uh, SharePoint 2010 Branding and Practice, uh, where there's plenty of scenarios like the one that we're talking about here. So what we're looking at here is a SharePoint team side here and uh, one of the uh, first tasks that happens in the SharePoint branding world is uh, when, when the design team gives you a, a sliced version of, uh, of the site uh, such as this one, uh, one of the most common tasks is that you have to transfer the, um, the markup and the design to your team site so it looks more like, so your team site it looks like this is actually uh, what your design team has designed for you. So uh, we'll see exactly how to do that uh, in this particular video. Um, so I'm going to be using a tool called SharePoint Designer and in the next video we're going to take a look at how to do that in uh, Visual Studio. So now I'm going to open my uh, Contoso.com site here. The first thing I'm going to do here, uh, I'm going to access the master page that's being used on the site that uh, drives the markup and it's v4 master and uh, I'm gonna edit the master page and uh, we're gonna start start by by taking a look at how the master page looks like so this is my split view of my master page and my uh, and my code on the markup of master page so if I go back to my artifacts uh, that were given to me by my design team I have images and I have CSS first thing I'm gonna do here I'm gonna copy the CSS as is as it was given to me uh, to my site um, so I'm gonna copy the markup and I'm gonna paste it over to my style library so in the style library I'm gonna create a new CSS file called uh, uh, school.css and I'm gonna paste the uh, the markup uh, right as is. So here is my file, here's my CSS file, I'm gonna paste the markup. Next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna also add all of the images. As you can see the CSS uses a lot of images uh, so I'm gonna create a folder here for my images and I'm gonna uh, add those images that were given to me again, so the sliced images that were given to me by my design team. So I'm gonna call a folder called images, uh, create folder called images and I'm just going to use SharePoint user interface to actually upload the actual files given to me. All right, here's my site, view all site content, here's my style library, here's the folder that was created by SharePoint designer, and I'm going to add a document and say upload multiple files and pick all of those files uh, right as they are from the images folder. All right, so now now that all of the files are on the site, I need to link those files over to my um, to my uh, CSS file that I just created because the CSS file has generic links, doesn't necessarily link to where the image is actually going to be. So I'm going to copy the style library URL and link it appropriately in my CSS. And here, as you can see, is images slash and name of the image. So I'm going to replace that with the uh, style library uh, slash images and then slash. I assume that that's my relative URL. So I'm going to click replace all and replace all of the occurrences of those uh, references, save the file. So the fact that this file is actually saved is actually not being used by the master page. There is no direction for master page to use this file. So I'm going to um, I'm going to switch back to my uh, master page in a catalogs folder and I'm going to create a reference to my CSS. I'm going to click style, attach a style sheet, pick that style sheet from the site and uh, and and the master page should use that particular style sheet. So let's see how that uh, how that happens. So the fact that the style sheet is actually going to be used and referenced by the master page um, doesn't really change anything from a design standpoint. So uh, the style sheet is added to the master page. Uh, you will actually notice that when you go back to the top of the master page markup and see that it actually uses the style sheet. There it is but nothing really changed. The reason why is this master page doesn't really reference any of the custom elements that are does, that are styled inside our style sheet. So our next task is to add those custom elements. So and those are things such as you know the header and all of the elements above here. So to actually see the markup better and see how the process of adding those things uh, is going to happen, I'm going to use Firefox and a tool called Firebug 
you're not familiar with Firebug, it's, uh, it's a tool allowing us to take a look at the markup of the uh, of the page, and then also browse the page uh, and uh, and modify the markup on the fly without really saving it. So I'm going to access my uh, SharePoint site through uh, through Firefox. And if you, don't worry if you're not using the Firefox. If you're using IE, there's another tool uh, in IE Arsenal for the same task. I'm going to take a look at the Firebug first. So I'm going to launch the Firebug window, and as you can see, as I um, hover over different elements on the site, I can actually drill down through the markup and see what markup gets rendered. And if I click on the markup itself, it shows me what elements show up. So in here, I have a top part, um, and if I take a look at, by the way, at uh, IE, press F12, I pretty much have access to the same features. So I can click Find, Select Element, and Select Elements here, and I'm going to throw me right away to the markup that I can kind of tweak and on the fly see changes that are that are happening. So uh, so that's if you're an IE person. And it's just a matter of preferences. In my case, I'm going to be using the uh, Firefox for this example. Um, so this particular part, S4 title, is actually responsible for the header part. Um, so this is a div that's responsible for the header part um, that I'm going to replace with my custom head, header. Um, so if I select and f locate that particular div and then select it all, you'll see that the part of the page that's, uh, that's a div um, that, that re is responsible for rendering that header is highlighted. So I'm going to hide that header and I'm, I'm going to replace it with my custom header. And to hide it, I'm going to use the hidden panel. So I'm going to Call, I'm going to wrap this particular section with uh, ASP panel run at server visible false, and that'll hide my. Uh, and, and I'm going to close the, our our panel tag, and it'll hide my uh, this particular markup um, from the screen. So let's take a look at how that looks in action. Um, I'm going to save the master page, and you'll see in a preview panel that it's hidden already. But let's take a look at how it looks in Internet Explorer. So I'm going to refresh the page and see my header is gone. So now I'm going to uh, actually copy the markup from my um, the side that was given to me by my design team and uh, and place my custom header, such as this uh, little uh, blue logo called Secondary School and then those links on the top here. So if I hover over those links, I'll see the markup changes in, in, in a firebug. And I can actually copy the markup. In my case, those are those two first top nav and uh, and header, um, those two divs. I'm going to copy them as they are um, into my master page, and that should apply the branding at least for the for the static section. So as you can see, those links are static; they're not really linked to anything. In your case, you might have have them linked, and we'll take a look at further how how to link a dynamic menu. But in my case, I'm just going to paste them as they are, um, and. Uh, and they should get rendered uh, because we already have our uh, CSS linked and uh, all of our images referenced. So uh, let's align this, save the page, and see what changes. So in the preview panel, you see a bit of a difference. There is no, there isn't any images rendered here. If I refresh the, my Inner Explorer, I also see no images, and I think that's because uh, the references are not proper in my CSS. And sure enough, if I want to have a relative reference, I should actually prepend the style library slash images with a with a dot dot slash style library slash images um, because uh, uh, that's how I define my relative URL. So if I do that, replace replace all of my uh, all of the occurrences of those references, save the uh, CSS, refresh the browser. Now my header is back to normal right away. We're all styled. So those are my static links. This is my header. One thing here left to do, except the actual content, of course, we're not going to style the content, is to style the menu, the little home button. So in here you see the menu is uh, cores, library, and etc. If we if we scroll to our um, Firebug window, we can actually see the structure here. So there is a div uh, with ID secondary menu. There is UL, LI, and link, and then span, and it repeats for each link. So, uh, in case you didn't know, this is this is the structure is required so we can uh, have all of our custom elements, such as this divider here and this background for for each uh, button, so we can have them uh, separate. And this is very uh, typical and standard markup that uh, a lot of slicers will give you. 
So for instance, you could change things like uh, the color of the text or, or change any of the design elements such as those uh, tabs on the top and, and dividers. So you may be given a different markup that basically achieves the same purpose by different, uh, um, by different kind of structure. And if, if it, let's take a look at how SharePoint uh, renders its own menu, because essentially those are going to have to match. If your markup given to you by the design team doesn't match how SharePoint renders uh, the menu in this case, you're going to have to match the structure to how SharePoint renders the, uh, the menu. Otherwise, it's, you know, you're just going to have to rework too many things. So let's take a look at the menu. And lucky that we are, we have a div here. We have UL, LI, link. Span, so it's exactly as uh, as we have in our uh, in our case, and uh, you know we, we don't have to rework anything, and uh, the markup is going to look exactly the same. So uh, I'm gonna just uh, copy, uh, you know I'm gonna first I'm gonna locate where inside my master page uh, we have the menu defined, and I'm gonna see how I can apply my custom markup. Um, in, into my master page. So I'm going to copy one of the divs here and try to find it without, or div names, uh, in, into my, uh, and find it in my master page. That's not the one, so I'm going to go higher. And, uh, and the reason why I'm looking for that is because I want to know where the menu is defined inside uh, my uh, SharePoint. So sure enough, there is the one. So somewhere here, somewhere below, we have the menu defined. And sure enough, we have here this top navigation menu v4. If I go back to my Firefox, uh, I see the top navigation menu v4 here. And right below, there is actual menu markup. So I think this is the, the ASP.NET uh, or ASP menu is the menu, is the structure that gets rendered uh, for me automatically. So if I go back here in the preview panel, I'll see that uh, if I click on the menu, it's actually it actually highlights the ASP menu for me. So this is it. The only property that's available here uh, to change in terms of the classes is a CSS class property. So and actually, this S4-TN value matches the name of the div um, for uh, for my for my menu. So in my case, I also have a div that wraps my structure. Uh, called secondary nav. So what I think if I copy that second second nav uh, name into my uh, and, and name my div that way, it'll actually inherit the, the underlying structure and uh, all of the styles should inherit and, and my menu should be automatically styled as it is. Um, so wh when I when I replace the the CSS class on my ASP.NET menu here with my second nav, or secondary nav uh, value um, and save the page you'll notice that if I go to my uh, to my site it actually or, or in here I'm gonna refresh the page it actually doesn't appear to be styled and the reason why is because uh, SharePoint uh, uses the the class attribute to actually for that secondary nav versus our custom markup uses the uh, the div attribute uh, or the ID so we just need to change the reference in our CSS to actually uh, point to the class rather than, than the, the ID of the div. So all of the instances of the second nav have to, um, have to point to the class attribute. So I'm going to replace that and that should uh, kind of fit in nicely with the, with the rest of the markup. So as you can see here, we're using ID uh, and I'm going to replace that value with now the um, with dot second nav, indicating the class attribute, replace all of the instances of that, and uh, save the page, or this or the school dot CSS, and next time when when I refresh my site, my menu should be styled, and sure enough it is. This is the Firefox, and let's take a look at how it looks in the IE. In IE, the rendering may be a little different, and sure enough, there's a search box floating on the top of the menu, so obviously I'm going to have to fix that. So the good thing is when you create a new site underneath here, uh, right, it'll, it'll actually it'll be dynamic enough and the menu is going to be automatically structured and styled to how it is in our mockup. So in our case, we have this library, we have honor roll, honor roll and scholarships. So if I create my markup, it'll automatically get transferred over to SharePoint. So 
um, pretty much very common task uh, you know for, for you to transfer the markup next uh, video we're going to take a look at how uh, we can do exactly the same using a visual studio uh, and uh, hopefully that will get you started with your with your branding of SharePoint based on the uh, markup that was given to you by designers thanks very much for watching bye bye